this is currently my most favorite build in Guild Wars 2. And it is the good guy dragon hunter. And it's my favorite build because you're extremely strong on your own independently. And you also have the ability and the skills in order to save your team and turn the tide of team fights. And that is my most favorite um, role I like to play in the game because I like to jump into a battle, see my team losing in a small scale or large scale du duel and be able to contribute in some way to helping my team turn the tide of the fight. Now, quick disclaimer, um, this build cannot kill everything. There are certain high sustain builds and extremely powerful burst builds that can kill you. So check out the gameplay footage in the end so you kind of have a sense of how this build performs in the world versus world environment. And make a decision to see whether you'll like to try it. I highly encourage it. The, the world versus world maps can always use more dragon hunters because they've got amazing skills that can really save your team from dying and can really turn the tide of fights. So let's get right into it, okay? So first up, um, let's go over the gear and I'll spend a bit more time on this because I saw the analytics in my Vanguard build video and you guys apparently love listening to gear and re-listening to gear. So we'll spend a bit more time on this and I'll walk you through why I spec this way. So I am using um, Marauder. So I think I have about two or three pieces of Marauder and the rest of it is Wanderer. Now you're probably wondering, is this guy crazy? Like, <laughs> Wanderer pieces? Um, no, I'm not, because um, a lot of the scaling for damage you do here comes from your traits, but the other piece of scaling and sustain comes from the boons that you grant yourself. So protection boons are really important, might boons and fury boons are very important to help you sustain your damage, which is why um, concentration and uh, boon duration becomes pretty important for this build and it only complements the traits later on But boons overall always work well for our guardians. Um, I'm also using Fireworks runes for my dragon hunter class as well too because as you know uh, mobility is always a problem and This also grants me boon duration and some damage um, The six stacks of my might is okay. It's great for scaling Fury and Vigor is extremely important because um, you got to crit a lot when you play Guardian. You, you got to crit or you're, you're kind of wasting your time. Um, and the second piece of that is Vigor uh, because your mobility is limited, which means you're going to have to well time your dodges. And the more Vigor and the more uh, dodges that you have, you know, the better, especially when you're being, when people are piling damage on you in an outnumbered situations which you're gonna find a lot because dragon hunter as you're all aware doesn't have the best mobility in the game so you really do need um, as many dodges and blocks as possible to try to stall um, or to get you an opportunity to get away and regroup with your friends so you'll see some of that gameplay in the end all right let's move over to trinkets uh, the trinkets, I've got a mix. You know, I need a little bit of healing power. I need some toughness. I need some concentration. I have some marauder pieces, some pieces to raise toughness. Really, this is really customizable. You can copy my setup or you can try to customize based on um, when you feel you're too glassy. So if you feel you're too glassy, you want to pile on some more uh, toughness pieces. If you find your damage is lacking, I would pile power and ferocity pieces. Um, you'll see how I overcome the precision piece later on, but I would recommend a minimum of about 35 crit chance resting. And then afterwards, uh, rely on things like fury and other um, trinkets and traits that can, and runes and uh, sigils that can help improve that for you. So that would be my recommendation. For weapons, uh, for the longbow, actually, let's start with the sword. Okay, so the sword is very similar to my Vanguard build. I want to build some stacks with Sigil of Strength 
this is optional. I'm sure some other people might prefer something else like Sigil of Battle or something. But the way I play, the way this build works for me is the sword and shield is my starting weapon, uh, which I start the fight with because I want to use Sigil of Strength to build some might stacks. And I can use the shield if I time it correctly to take some boons from whoever I interrupt. And that gives me an opportunity to soften them up a little bit and also gives me some boons. So when I switch over to my longbow, so I start the battle with shield and sword, uh, sword and shield. And then when I switch over to longbow, I use superior sigil of vision because you got to crit. If you're not critting with your longbow, you're you're wasting your time. <laughs> you should use another weapon. So I highly recommend Sigil of Vision when you use your longbow. And then I would also use Sigil of Agility because what I found um, is the Sigil of Agility throws off the timing of your opponents. They, they think they have X amount of seconds to dodge a true shot. But then what ends up happening instead is when you switch to longbow, the Sigil of Agility grants you quickness, which throws off the timing a bit. So people have less time than they think to use their dodge, which lets you land more often than, than not. So I highly recommend Sigil of Agility with Vision for Longbow. Uh, since I've changed it to this variation, I've never changed it back. Okay, so these are the gear. I'm going to move us over to the traits, but guys, um, I know from my last analytics video that you guys don't spend a lot of time on the trades. I will keep it short, but just hear me out because what I'm going to show you in the trades is it, it's highly important. You, you got to know how you got to know this in order to play this build. So I'll take us over to to the build uh, traits and I'm going to be quick. I'm just going to go over what's important. OK, and here's what you need to know about this build and what you need to know is where your damage comes from. So you got damage modifiers. But the first thing to keep in mind about Guardian damage modifiers is they're not free. They, ha they all have some sort of condition in order to give you extra damage modifiers. There are certain classes, I won't name which, that give you dam damage modifiers for free. Okay, um, But for Guardian, each damage modifier has a condition and it's important you know them so you can maximize your damage. So the first one I'm going to go over is unscathed contender so this gives you 20 percent extra damage if you have aegis so one way to proc this is if you use your shield of courage which gives you a shield in front and gives you aegis so if you have that you can do some extra damage and when you use a virtue you also get inspiring virtue which gives you about six seconds of extra damage as well so just from using shield three sorry not shield three uh virtue three you can maximize on the two of these, all right? And I, and I want you to, to keep that in mind. The stability also helps so you don't get knocked down while you're trying to burst them. So keep that in mind as well. Um, the second piece of the damage, um, it actually comes from... Um, it comes from Zealot's Aggression, okay? Which gives you another 10%. When, so when you land your Spear on them, you proc Cripple. So you got to wait a second, proc Cripple. And then that will do extra damage as well. Um, another damage condition is you can get 15 maximum damage based on your distance. So if you are further away from your opponent, you can do an extra 15% damage. So that's something to keep in mind too. Every one of your damage modifiers has a condition. Okay. And lastly, you can, if you have somebody tethered to your spear, so spear one, you can do an additional 15% damage. On top of that now I'm sure this sounds very exciting but from my experience I've never been able I, I'm sorry not never but I have very um, rarely get to maximize on all the damage map modifiers at once but it's worth knowing okay so your ideal scenario is if you have shield 3 on or if you just have Aegis on um, you use a virtue like Spear of Justice Okay, so you wait a second to get cripple. You keep the spear on them. You happen to be also far away from them. And you still have Aegis to capitalize on the 20%. And you just used a virtue and hit them within six seconds. 
then you're going to hit the very max damage, which could possibly one-shot your opponent. More often than not, though, you're not going to be able to maximize on all of them, so it's important you know where your damage comes from, so you know how to you know how to space them out so you always get something out of your hits. Okay? So that's all I'm going to talk about the traits. I know you guys don't spend a lot of time on the traits. So if you want, you can copy my traits or make some customized changes with them. And next, I'll take you on how to combo and how to use this build. Okay? Okay. So for the next part of the build video, I'm going to show you how to combo, okay? So I'm going to show you a quick burst combo, a heal combo, and also a run combo, okay? So the first up is the burst combo. And for the burst combo, the thing to keep in mind is you're going to have one burst on sword and shield, and you're going to have one burst for your longbow, okay? So for sword and shield to start the fight off, the first thing you want to do is you want to try to land your spear. Ideal scenario. Teleport in, use your test of faith, knock him out, pull him back in, Switch to Longbow, push him out in True Shot. And that's your combo. That's the ideal combo that you're going to want to land, okay, in order to do it. So, the situation is always, it's not always going to be perfect. So, sometimes what you're going to have to do instead is you're going to have to teleport in, hit him a few times, try to bait out some bursts, hit him with the spear, test of faith, push him out. And then pull them back in. Obviously, in this case, you uh, you can't really see that, but that would be the ideal scenario. What you want to do is you want to start the fight off, build up some boons, give yourself some fury. Um, you want to put down your test of faith, and you want to drag him, push him out once, and pull him in once. So that's how I'm gonna I'm gonna do that part again. Spear, get in close, test of faith, push him out, pull him back in. True shot. And this combo, um, it won't always land, but more often than not, a part of it will land, and you will be able to get some damage off. Okay. The next part is um, how to how to burst heal. Now, something that the Dragon Hunter has that the regular Guardian class doesn't have is you have a Wings of Resolve that can give you a ton of healing and regeneration. And then you also have this trap. This trap, I love this heal. Um, this heal is probably the best heal you have on Guardian. And one of the reasons why it's, it's, it's the best thing to happen on Guardian is that, number one, the, the, the reason why some people don't use it is because they don't know how. You can't rely on people to step on your trap. So what I like to do instead is you got Judge's Intervention and you also have your Sword 2. So what I do is I don't rely on them having to step on my trap. What I do instead is I teleport towards them. So I can use Judge's Intervention and drop my heal down. Right? Blind, test of faith, spear him, push him out, pull him back in. And you can do that as well too. You can use your heal as part of your burst. But... The heal heals you for a ton, and there's no other guardian ability that can heal you for about half your health in world versus world if spec correctly. So for the heal, um, you can teleport towards them, or what you can do instead is if it's like a thief that you know is running away, but you got to heal. Uh, you can also, if you can't teleport towards them, spear them and bring them towards you. Oh, I can't seem to pull. Give it a second. Pull him towards you. Still test the faith. True shot. Or the other option too is to land this on them and then put your heal. Immobilize them and then land your heal on them too. So Guardian has got a great set of skills where if they won't heal you, you can teleport to them and force the heal. Or you can immobilize them and then afterwards get the heal that way as well. So it requires a little bit of... Um, ingenuity but more often than not I always get the heal off and that can save your life all right so that is a quick um, very easy to use burst heal that you can use and I'll move over on how to run so how to run away 
So Guardian doesn't have good mobility. I think everybody knows this. Um, it, it, the Dragon Hunter is okay because you have the Virtue 2, which is a leap. Uh, but most of the Guardian's escape potential comes from the teleport, so Sword 2 and uh, Judge's Intervention. So for Dragon Hunter, if there isn't something to teleport to, odds are you're not going to be able to escape. So if I see a target there and I want to get away, I can use my teleport to get closer. But you're not always going to have something to teleport to. So you need a way to stall. And one way that I find very... Um, important for stalling. It doesn't work with classes that have a ton of mobility, but what you can do, here's what you can do, and you'll see it in some, in some of my videos, you can land the spear. That procs cripple on them. So while you're running away, you can always proc protection here, and then you can use your shield to knock him back. That was a huge fail. While you're run, running away and slowing him down, you can also use your knockback to keep him back so you can leap and get away. And then find something to teleport to. Hang on. Not working. And then find something to teleport to. So didn't realize it didn't work on the bridge. But here's an example too. Right? Force the heal. Use the knockback. Proc the cripple. As you, as you try to run away. As you wait for stuff to come back. Because the cripple will keep him slowed down in order for you to get away. There. And then you can also teleport just to get away from everyone. Okay? So it's very simple. Your mobility comes from impeding their mobility. Uh, unfortunately, you don't have a ton of leaps like certain classes and ports that don't require targets. So that kind of limits your mobility. But it doesn't mean you're helpless, uh, because with Judge's Intervention, uh, you can kind of get two leaps out of it as well, too. So that's about 1,600 if you use them um, correctly. So there you have it. Um, I'm going to put on some gameplay now and enjoy. Again, this is my favorite class, and if you have any questions, do let me know.